risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Scholars of Wrestling Show. I am your man behind the mic, as always, Jeff, Scholar Jeff, Esquire. And to my left is Scholar Tarek. How are we doing tonight? Theodore Logan. You know what? The one highlight that came out of this week in Wrestling Fool was the John Cena Open Challenge, which was the type of match that John Cena debuted in against Kurt Angle, who defeated Val Venus for the European title. Oh, I thought we were going to have to build up to that point, but no, you, we didn't waste any time. I wasted no time on that. I'm just like, you know what? Because this is such a lackluster week in wrestling, I got to pull back six, six degrees of Val Venus. Oh, I was planning on going there anyway, but yeah, damn it, fool, you beat me to it. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, Scholar Brian is out on assignment this week. Curing from whatever sickness has taken over him. Yes. That's fight right. Fight the good fight, brother. Fight the good fight. In the meantime, even though this week might have been relatively uneventful. Very. Rel- I'm going with relatively. I'm trying to be, You're trying to be nice about it. I'm yeah, just, I'm I'm just being the truth. It is this, this is one of the most like non-eventful weeks in wrestling. But it doesn't mean nothing happened. I agree on that. Nothing happened, but... There is a small amount of stuff to talk about. Very yeah. small. Yeah, so we'll go, we're going to get right back into it with the way we always do, with a little bit of backstage news. Indeed. Let us go peek behind the curtain and check in on a little... Oh, damn, Brian's not here. Backstage <laughs> news! News! news. news. I was not so, so good <laughs> with only two people. You know, just because Brian wasn't here, I just had a brain fart, and I was like, oh yeah, wait, Brian's oh, not here. <laughs> if I actually really, I'm like, oh yeah, Brian's not here, I would have done a very good backstage news. 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 See? What you did there. See? 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 There you go. Much N- better. Nice rebound. All right. Oh, all, right. <laughs> all right. All right. Woo! Woo! All right. Getting right into it. Uh... I'm not sure if you... Well, I, obviously we saw the, the amazing Cesaro-Cena match from last week. Like I said, this, is this, the, this was the actually. highlight. This was the highlight of this week. Oh yeah, big time. Uh, this part I didn't actually catch. Apparently, from according to reports, the screen went black for a couple seconds. Yes, it did. Yeah, I didn't see this. Apparently, Cesaro uh, flipped off the crowd or something like that. No, he, here's what happened. Because WWE was afraid that they that he was going to pull a middle finger, they blanked, they blacked him out. But what he really did was something that him and Tyson Kidd have been doing and pulling like a brass ring fingers. Ah, I see. And it scared WWE, and that's why they blacked him out. And he was doing it to John Cena, and it was their sort of it was him and Tyson Kidd's thing of we're not WWE doesn't look at us, so we're just going to do it. We're just going to do what we want type deal. Right, but everything's been cleared about that, and even though like it really was nothing, I hope that because WWE got scared, this doesn't hurt Cesaro. Yeah, really. Since there wasn't such a bad uh, answer to this, it was just a big misunderstanding, and he didn't actually do anything. And it's pretty obvious they didn't. Uh, I'm not really worried about this. Plus, the fact they put on an absolutely dynamite match with Cena was. You know, just another feather in his cap. Oh yeah, and I was thinking, I'm like, okay, even though it was such a, even the ending worked because both guys definitely did not need to lose this match, and it definitely helped Cesaro look amazing. Mm-hmm. And it was a, it is a match of the year candidate. Yet it's not going to be match of the year for me. I already have. I think we all made it clear what's going to be our match of the year. Right in December. But this definitely was a match of the year candidate, and hopefully this, minus the little misunderstanding, will wait, open WWE's eyes and just see the awesomeness that is Cesaro that, even on this show, I have nonstop bragged about. Push Cesaro. Hashtag push Cesaro. Yay. That's all I need to say. Yay. Push Cesaro. Please. Please, WWE. Don't waste this opportunity. He even inherited some of Tyson Kidd's moves, pulling the sharpshooter, a really great sharpshooter. Mm-hmm. I like that he did the, uh, uh, wow, I'm blanking out. The big swing? The big swing, thank you, king of swing, der. There the big go. swing into a sharpshooter, which caused KO to come in and KO the match. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I loved every second of this 
and hopefully this misunderstanding won't hurt Cesaro. Yeah, I really doubt it. Yeah. He's been on an absolute roll lately, and thankfully it seems like he's getting acknowledged for it. Yes. Hey, he's on, he's on the right path. At first it scared me, because I'm just like, yeah. Kevin Owens calls, it's like, you're instead going to face this man, out comes Cesaro. I'm like, no, 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 they are not turning Cesaro heel again. No! And from how the match went out, him pulling the big swing, which is a face move, because when he turned heel, he stopped doing that. Right. And he pulled the big swing and have Kevin Owens come in and disqualify him and then pop up Powerbomb. Hopefully this leads to something in the future. Oh, Maybe yeah. when K- when Kevin Owens wins the U.S. title from John Cena, <laughs> prediction, yeah. uh, they can lead to a Cesaro-Kevin Owens feud. Uh, I think it's certainly in the cards. It certainly wouldn't be the worst thing to do, have Kevin Owens do. And Cesaro. <laughs> yeah, and Cesaro, yeah. But then again, Cesaro, <laughs> Cesaro is just Cesaro. rocketing to the top at this point. But Kevin me, Owens, we'll see where he goes. But for me, I kind of want to see a Ryback versus Cesaro uh, for the Intercontinental Championship. And that would be cool. Especially since you, we have all noticed Ryback has gotten better in the ring and on the mic. Mm-hmm. I actually think those two can work off each other really well. But that's just me thro- trying to change the topic. Let's, let's keep going in backstage news. Okay. Well... Here's one story that I know you're paying close attention to. The Hulk Hogan sex tape scandal. I actually did not know about this. <laughs> you were, wait, are you serious? You really I, didn't hear about the Hulk Hogan sex tape scandal? No. Yeah, apparently he Hogan is suing some website who has d- distributed his sex tape from like one or two years ago. I forget which. Actually, this sound this does sound familiar about his, him having a sex tape. But isn't it with like one wrestler's wife, no, I or, think it was or a girlfriend, like or something? Bubba Love Sponge, bun, the Bubba the Love Sponge's wife, or something like that. Okay, this does sound familiar. Yeah, apparently, if, apparently, if I remember the article, the, what's going on, he's apparently suing the just the person who originally leaked it out and distributed it, or at least he would. Because apparently he was supposed to, this was supposed to go to court on the 6th, it just recently got delayed, and apparently there no date has been set again just yet. Apparently Hulk Hogan is having second thoughts of showing his real American pride. I am a real American. So would you say he's suffering from performance anxiety? <laughs> oh, <laughs> penis jokes. We love Hulk Hogan. And Seriously though. Except this part. Sign, sign my Mr. Nanny DVD, please. <laughs> oh please! Uh, I, you know what? We all go to a convention where Hogan actually is. I want to see you do that just to see his reaction. Please don't be upset with me. Can I, you please sign this DVD? <laughs> I just want to see his reaction. Either he's going to be like flattered because he hasn't thought about that movie in years, or just like, wow, I can't believe you actually did this. You can sign my world title too. Just can you just sign my DVD? <laughs> Forget the world title. Sign my DVD of Mister <laughs> Nanny, brother. I want to do that now. We gotta go to like Comic Con or something. Hopefully, he will be here at Comic Con in October. Oh, he should be. He brother should be brother. Speaking of getting sued, apparently someone is suing WWE for all their concussion injuries. I've read about this. I don't know the full details about it. Isn't it like one guy? Isn't it like a couple of them uh, wrestlers who have been concussed? I think so. Yeah. That that's really the most I know about this. Yeah, and really the, all that's really been done so far is WWE just released a statement saying that they were going to defend themselves in court, blah, 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 blah. I guess the only, the one real thing that they like the, they have in their defense is they're really cutting back on particularly head damaging moves. The pile driver, chair shots to the head. They're, they're going out of their way to prevent concussion injuries. So mm-hmm. that... If these guys decided to sue them, if once they were like back then, when WWE was still doing that kind of stuff, I would understand. But I think now it's kind of a, yeah, I think you guys are a little too late. Depending on when this happened, when these wrestlers had their injuries, mm-hmm. but I think WWE has a strong def- has a strong defense. Yeah, I don't think this is going to go farther. Much farther than anything. I just think it's wrestlers trying to get an easy buck. Mm, to an extent. Possibly. Whether or not, again, this turns out to be something that WWE ends up 
uh, changing their longer term policies but really like you said at this point I think they're doing enough I don't, really don't think we're going to see that much uh, much difference at all I think the only thing that <laughs> they would have to do is turn their product into whatever that Saturday morning slam where there was no head moves whatsoever and every time a big move is dropped they cut to the crowd for a reaction and then you see a wrestling fan you see a tear coming out of their eyes because you're just like what have you done to wrestling and every, and every time they cut to the same fan the weird naked Indian crying a single tear hey don't cry yeah we're gonna clean it up see <laughs> see <laughs> uh, Wayne's World jokes only in only in the scholars only wrestling. in America America speaking of America somehow in our last thing for backstage news John Cena is getting another award this Yay. time a humanitarian award from ESPN and I I gotta be honest with you I didn't even know ESPN had such a thing neither did I and congratulations to John Cena you I've made it perfectly clear I have nothing against you John Cena the man who has done who has done so much for WWE I just always had a problem. No comment. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope that no one heard that. No, I, everyone heard it. I'm not even going to go back and edit that. I'm sorry. No, you're not. Leave it in. I know. That's why I said <laughs> Okay, it's leaving in. Moving on. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I've always just... My problem has always just been the John Cena character and how the same it's been and how it's he's just been booked. But for John Cena, the man, I applaud him. Congratulations. I, hopefully you will get the award because this was just the nomination. And Apple Doe. And Apple Doe. Apple Doe. All right. So that's about it for backstage news. What a very eventful backstage news it is. Oh, yeah. All those legal proceedings. Yay. But anyway, like we said, this was a relatively uneventful week in the world of wrestling. One thing we did notice, though, is that WWE is going to be doing a really historical show this weekend for July 4th, as a matter of fact. I mean, what when you think about July 4th, our Independence Day, what could possibly be more American than a professional wrestling show in Japan? That's right, we're talking about the WWE Beast in the East show. Didn't they have a 4th of July in England? Or a tribute to the troops show yeah, but in at least, England. At least they speak the Queen, Queen's English. Not, okay, I'll give you that. We're not going to some uh, sumo hall that I... Plus, this is also going to be broadcast live on the WWE Network at 5.30 in the morning, East Coast time. Yeah, I'm not going to watch that live. <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> still, it's just something I've never seen WWE do before. And Have they ever done anything like this? I don't think they have. No, they. this is a first. This oh. is a first, and... It's very entertaining. This, it's, it's it's the most entertaining thing to come out of WWE this past week. Actually, it really is. Thank you, press line negotiator. <laughs> press line negotiator. Uh, I hope it helps to us. In any in any case, I'm really excited about this. It should prove to be an interesting experience, if for no other reason than the time it's showing. But hey, enough of that. Let's get right into the matches. The first one. I guess this will basically be our quote-unquote prediction show for WWE Beast in the East. That's exactly what this is. Yeah. So let's pick them. First match, your boy Cesaro versus Diego, for some reason, of the Los Matadors. I don't know why, especially since Cesaro is kind of going back in a singles run since Tyson Kidd is... Uh, he just had his neck surgery. Speaking of which, did you see his picture? Yes, I did. My, that was crazy. My God. It's going to be one crazy battle scar. Imagine he gets like a tattoo of like stitches and all that just to be like, Ha ha, I faked you out. <laughs> oh. But, faked my injury, psych. I'm a heel now. I really wasn't going with that. I just was like, you see, battle scars. I know. I'm, I'm just taking your ball and I'm running into the popcorn stand with it. To Kane's popcorn stand. To Kane's popcorn stand. Popcorn Kane. Popcorn Kane. Politics Kane. Politics Kane. But yeah, it's kind of a. It really is kind of a no-brainer who's winning this one. Yeah, I mean clearly it's, it's, Diego is going to win this. Stop game. it! 
You that but is I, not that is not a funny joke. But I no. Like, but I say the right say the right prediction. But I say like, the right prediction. Right now. Say, if you say Diego, I swear I will slap you. Say, he's picking Cesaro. He's he's just says finding I, some he's finding some way to make this episode not the shortest episode in Scholars of Wrestling history. No. <laughs> Maybe. Kinda. <laughs> Sorta. Sorta. <laughs> but hey, yeah. Maybe it's... I'm just a really big fan of Diego. You're a bigger fan for uh, El Torito. Yeah, I kind of like the little balls. 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 Ah, oh. balls. But yeah. So yeah, Cesaro. Really? Cesaro. C- Cesaro. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, went a little know. far for, that, for just that yeah. one prediction. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, hey, you know what? I bet you that this Beast of the East show is going to be full of surprises, including the match quality that we get at Cesaro Diego. Just because, honestly, I think they're putting that match on the card just because I think that the Japanese crowd will respond better to a more higher work rate type of match. I agree. And that ma- that really does make sense. But That's really the only thing really I think on of, a, anyway. But really, just really looking at it character and storyline-wise... It's really Cesaro's match. It's just the match was just put there to, because they know that these two guys can really go at it, and it's going to look pretty. Oh yeah, it's going to be a pretty story. Yeah, to they're tell. basically making the the most out of everyone who wants to go to Japan. Speaking of which, we're talking about Lucha Dragons versus the New Day. <sighs> Big E and uh, Xavier Woods. Uh, I got to take another chug at this. It's okay. Take your time. Taking in the power that is the clear liquid. <clears throat> Here, this is going to be my prediction. Lucha, 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 and string music. And nothing against New Day, but they are actually. Re- I think they're at a point where they're trying to get other tag teams over. Right, and you know, there's uh, nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong. I actually with that. want to see them grow, and honestly, I'm I'm surprised that the Lucha Dragons haven't been up absolutely on fire more lately. Well, hey, you have other tag teams that's been here longer, a.k.a. the primetime players, and now, especially since Rowan had to be out of commission, sadly, mm-hmm. they need to fill some spots in for the tag team division, and Lucha Dragons, it, they're going to take us take that spot. Not as heels, though. Not a heel spot. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you mean, and you know what? Given how well Lucha Dragons have been doing on TV lately, and in NXT, and how instantly over Kalisto is going to be whenever they decide to pull the trigger on him, I've got no problem with that whatsoever. I can see that being a uh, three-team feud coming into regular WWE television. Oh, that's if they do that, that's going to be so much fun. I actually do think it would be so much fun, and it actually can work. Oh yeah, big time, big time. But yeah, uh, Lucha Dragons. Lucha Dragons? All right. Next match, which is sure to be the match of the night. Divas Championship match. Nikki Bella versus Naomi versus Paige. Tarek, you're clearly very excited about this match. I know it's going to be tough. Calm, you're, calm down. Calm down. Yeah. Calm down. You're going to take a deep breath. Tell us who def- your prediction is. I'm just going to pick Nikki Bella because... When it comes to the Divas division, WWE hates me. <laughs> I think she hates us all, including their female talent. Because huh. you have Paige and Naomi, two women who deserve to be uh, women. I was gonna, I was gonna say they deserve women. to be a women. No, no, I was gonna say women's champion, but yeah, but if only if. But Vince McMahon doesn't look at women as the women's champion. They look at them as divas, eye candy. They're divas, damn it. They're divas, damn it! They're just eye candy, and what bigger eye candy than the one that's having sex with my, with my man, John Cena, Nikki Bella? Woo! Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. Okay, you want to talk about taking the conversation in a weird situation? I didn't say anything about that. I You're just... talking about ah, my man, John Cena. Well, it's true though. Uh, not to that extent, and even if it is to that extent, Shh. I don't want to. Know. It, exactly. It, it, it's, it's 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 okay. It's exactly. The truth hurts. Exactly. The truth hurts. But yeah, it's obviously they're gonna pick Nikki Bella to keep going, even though it completely ruins Naomi's heel run 
completely wasting it and completely wasting pages standing up to what the Divas division is right now, which, my God, we're getting sick and tired of this. Wait, I don't want to see Alicia Fox joining Team Bellas. Or a, it's pretty simple. It, it's even funny that Alicia Fox is the only one that actually is doing something about this storyline. The other ones, Layla. Yeah, where is Layla? I haven't... Has the last time, the last time, you, the last time you saw Layla was when she walked out on Paige's rally, and then now look where Summer Rae is. Yet, where is Summer Rae? With Rusev to feud with Ziggler oh, yeah, and I Lana. totally forgot that happened. I'm wow. sorry. I'm sorry. I had to remind you of that. Her horrible, horrible choice. Ah, uh, I still like you, Summer Rae, but damn, girl, you lost. You lost my love, Summer Rae. Uh, there is no. There is no love. For for me in the Divas division. So, yeah. Nick, I like. I still like Summer Rae's hair. I just want to run my fingers through it. I just miss Paige, Naomi, and Natalia. That, that, that's it with the, when it comes to the women's division. I miss Summer Rae and her hair. I miss Trish Stratus and Lita. And I, Molly Holly. And Ivory. Oh, I, I, sorry, I started going off again. Jacqueline. You know what? Now I just I'm just gonna watch like Stardom or something. Just get some really good women's matches out there. Anyway, I'm gonna watch just NXT to see Charlotte, Sasha, Sasha, Sasha again. Just you know what? Just the Triple entire Sasha. the entire NXT women's division because you know that's an actual women's wrestling division. Looking at you, WWE. You know what? Can I just go off for a minute? Main roster. It really pisses me off when they do really great women's matches on NXT because WWE as a whole there were just like okay we we this is what you want okay we know this is what you want we can give it to you but we're just not going to going to do that on the main roster so screw you it's Pay all, us your 10 bucks a month you know it would be different once Triple H takes full control of creative on the main roster i really hope so i genuinely truly do but hey when that'll ever be, who can only know. In the meantime, let's get back to something that will be remotely interesting. Now Wait, did you the... did you put your prediction for that match? Yeah, I just I was just gonna go with Nikki just because um, I I just don't care anymore. It's welcome to the club. Yeah. So and then instead, I'm just gonna give me like three seconds just to calm my mind by thinking about Summer Rae's hair. It'll make me feel better. Summer Rae's hair. Okay, I'm good. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> All right, next match: John Cena and Dolph Ziggler versus the hastily scrambled together team of Kane and King Barrett. We all know if. Uh, actually, you know what? I I got nothing. I really got nothing out of this. As far as who will win or why this match was put together, hell, I can honestly see. Well, let's see, Barrett and Kane. I bet you it was just one of those matches where, okay, they're just throwing this match together because they're on the tour. Yeah, and so much for Kane going to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, it's God. funny. It's funny. I heard actually heard that as a little detail, they gave him off of uh, house shows just to keep playing up that angle. Wait a wait a what what a way there we go what, what a, a way. way to screw that up by having him go to Japan. Hey, maybe that's part of his, uh... How, who, did he mention how long his trip to Hawaii was? No. All right, well, there you go. There's your reasoning. But I'm sorry. Would you really want to just go and throw some... What did he say? Throw hula dancers in volcanoes or something? He talked. To, he said that in the promo. He's like, hey, I can throw coconuts or, some, or hula dancers into a volcano. Hey, honestly, if I got the chance to throw to mess around in Hawaii and throw hula dancers into volcanoes for even like three or four days and then I got to go to Japan I, I'd i be all about that noise I guess I guess that makes sense even though I think if you were going to Hawaii for vacation I think four days is just too short hey it's better than nothing I've never even been to Hawaii neither have I we should go to Hawaii we should okay let's do that screw the batch predictions we're going to Hawaii see ya no, we're just kidding. We're not really going to Hawaii right now. Cause, Thank you, know. you for throwing in the right now, because now I kind of want to go to Hawaii. One day. One day. Maybe we'll record an episode of Scholars in Hawaii. 
place. If we're in Hawaii, I'm not going to go out and think about this show. Unless something really radical happens, and we're like, we got to cover this. I love I love your dedication to Scholars of Wrestling, fool. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Why you were never okay, wait a minute. We're got, we're off track here. We're talking about Cena Ziggler versus Kane Barrett. I'm gonna pick Cena Ziggler just because, you know, it's Cena and Ziggler. And it's obvious who's gonna get the pin actually, you know what? Damn. I don't know who's gonna get pinned in this one. Yeah, really. Kane or because they're both uh pin magnets. Uh I'm I'm gonna just go on a limb and say it's going to be Barrett that's going to be pinned because, you know... Because he's Barrett. Because he's Barrett, and apparently I've asked this so many times, or I've said this so many times, somebody in WWE really, really hates Barrett. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on over there. I don't think we're going to know for quite some time. But, hey, in the meantime, we're picking Cena Ziggler. Cena Ziggler. Cena Ziggler. At least Barrett got a squash match victory over Jack Swagger uh, on Jack Superstars. Swagger. We're probably going to have to do like a, a post-game post-mortem with that guy as soon as he leaves. As soon as the WWE cuts start coming in. Oh, yeah. He's probably near the near the top of the list at this rate. Sad to say. Uh, not sad for me. Mm. I've already made it clear on my, on my thoughts on Jack Swagger. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, okay, now we're getting the really good stuff. Next match, Chris Jericho versus Neville. I think this is, simply put, this is just uh, Jericho putting over Neville. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's going obvious to be, at this point. It's going to be a fantastic match. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a match that is probably going to be worth watching over and over again. Mm. Excuse me. Uh, but, like I said, it's it's going to be putting Neville or Neville over. Yeah, that, that's pretty much straight. And there is nothing wrong with that. Not at all. All right. Was, now you want to talk about quick discussions. That's about as quick as you get. Hell, it's actually. I think that's one of the only discussions of these only match so far that we actually really started saying something positive. I don't think we said a single bad thing about it. Oh, we're you want to get positive? Let's get positive starting right now. Bo Dallas the- is not on the card. Oh no, <laughs> we're gonna we have to go harder. We need to go even more positive because the next match is a return of Brock Lesnar versus his opponent for the evening, Kofi Kingston. You know, this is possibly one of the most arbitrary choices for uh, for any of big time returning Brock Lesnar matches. I yeah. Uh... Hell, uh, Brock Lesnar versus Mark Henry actually made more sense than this one. Yeah, this... What, what? Yeah, Kofi's gonna die. I, <laughs> Sorry, Kofi. I said this for Seth Rollins when Brock Lesnar f- officially came back. Kofi, look at Brock Lesnar. Look at him. And when you see him, he will be your death. He is the symbol of your death. <laughs> Brock Lesnar will be eleva- elevated to final boss status once again. Of course, he's uh, Shao Kahn. Uh, no, that's Triple H. Triple H is Shao Kahn. Then who? Then who is Brock Lesnar? Brock Lesnar is Goro. Okay, I'll give you that. Brock Lesnar is the final is the secret boss that shows up out of the blue and doesn't fight anybody except towards the end of the movie. He's not Kintaro. No, the, Goro, I'm talking about the original MK1. Okay, I'll give you that one. No, Kintaro was MK2, followed by Mortaro and 3, then 4 brought back Goro, then, let's see, that was Deadly Alliance. Okay, we get it, Brock Lesnar is Goro. <laughs> then Deception, Goro wasn't in that, in that except for the PSP version, and then after that was Ar- okay, Armageddon, Goro was playable but not a boss. And then came MK9, where Goro was in, still in that thing. And then MKX, and then Goro's back at being a sub-boss again. And rant. Was that really a rant? I thought it was just a whole list of M- MK knowledge for you. It's not really a rant. You got me talking about Mortal Kombat. That this, this kind of thing happens. It's sort of a mini rant. Okay, Brock Lesnar is Goro. Brock Lesnar is Goro. Times two. Goro times two. All right. Now... For the real main event, the real reason everyone's going to be watching this show, 
because you know, because you know, everyone really wanted to see Brock Lesnar versus Kofi Kingston. Come, I mean, For come the on. NXT Championship, we've got Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor. This is going to be fun. Oh yeah, one word, fun. Now the big question is: Is this going to be the moment where Finn Balor wins the NXT title? Yes. Okay, you're sort of having me sweating there for a minute, like you're going to fake me out. <laughs> D- really? We've already been ta- we've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. I wasn't sure if you changed your mind. No. No. Especially, especially on the network, cheap plug. They're actually going to pull a documentary about Finn Balor. Isn't it out there already? I, I actually don't know if it's I, either it I just think, went up or it's it's been up there for a while. I actually think it's like ske- like scheduled to debut tomorrow. Okay, that's probably what I was thinking. I gotta look and see if it's if it's up now, but I think it I think they said tomorrow because I was actually looking up the WWE Network to uh, see when Beast of the East is because I'm just like, wait, did I miss it? Nope, five thirty in the morning on. But yeah, on I Saturday. saw I saw the documentary for Finn Balor. I'm just like, hmm, I think I may actually watch this late tour. Late tour. Mm. But yeah, it's it's Finn Balor's time to shine as NXT champion, and it's Kevin Owens' time to shine by going into the main roster. Oh yeah, and you know what? More power to him. Honestly, maybe the shortest NXT run like ever. Hey, but look at where he's going and what he's doing. Yeah. I, I applaud him. Besides, with all the whole new big crop of people coming into NXT, that's, you know what, make make some room for him. Exactly. Or at least give Bolt Dempsey some room to breathe and so he can actually do something other than be a fat comedy guy again. I think he, I think it's maybe too late for our Bolt. I don't, I don't want to believe it. I, I, I still I'll like keep, Bolt I'll Dempsey. Keep, I'll keep your beacon of hope alive. Well, s- s- Samoa Joe. Beacon. 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 All right. Now, obviously, I think we're all in agreement here. Finn Balor's going to win. One last prediction. He always seems to step it up with the war paint and demon paint. Yeah. The the demon form. Last time, he got demon wings and an eye on his back. Is he going to add anything new? And what's it going to be? Demon wings? If... I'm going to say no. Yeah, honestly, I can well, see them reusing just the the last one from uh, from NXT Takeover, with the wings and the and the eyeball and the crazy Cthulhu if they, stuff. If they add any more to that, he's going to look like a character from Six Flags. Hmm, is that a good thing? No, 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 because you know, it's a mascot. Why does everybody um, hate him? Because he's a mascot. Because he's a mascot. <laughs> If anyone knows that reference, I was I'm going to pull another applaud for you because I don't he t- it took him a minute to figure it out. <laughs> Actually, I don't honestly don't even remember. I remember the quote, I just don't remember where it's from. Oh, fool you! Sh- shame on you! Shame yes, finger! Shame on me! No, really, Rocko's modern like, life. Oh, that's it. I was like, I when they went to the baseball game. Yeah. Why do they hate him so much? Because he's, he's a mascot. Because he's a mascot. For some reason, that came off as more br- a, a British voice than a, as than as a Rocco voice. Mm. So that's I think that's what threw me off. All right, well, yeah. That's... Either way, Finn Balor not a mascot, only a winner, only a winner, and a future champion, and a future champion as of Finn uh, Balor for uh, Fourth of July. I could see Finn Balor defending the title against a returning Hideo Kojima. Thank yeah. you, not Brian, Atami. That would be interesting if they actually turned him heel. Does it have to be a heel? Uh, it'd be probably better if it were a heel. Well, did Neville really. and Sami Zayn have a face or heel when they fought for the title? Yeah, was, Neville was actually playing the role of the heel. Real? I don't remember that. I thought it was just he like, was sort of an arrogant. Like, he was had a bit of a more more of an arrogant streak, but he was definitely playing the heel. But was it like oh he turned heel for it? Sort of, yeah. It wasn't like really strong, like blatant, like main roster WWE heel playing. I guess but it was just very. He, he sort of cheated a bit to sort of, to uh, get out of a title defense and win over Sami Zayn during one oh. of his earlier defenses. I guess I just must have that. missed that because yeah. again, I... they're they're subtle and they're smart about this. They're more subtle than we're used to on the main roster. 
because you know it's su- it's such a kids show on the main roster. Yeah, it's it's not that it's a kids show; it's Vince McMahon booking it. That's why for the kids for for the kids. Damn it! For the kids. Damn it! Uh, so anyway, those are our predictions for Beast and Knees. It should be a great show. But you know what? We also want to know what you think. As always, you can get in touch with us during all the regular ways. Leave us a comment on this on this Facebook Facebook on this YouTube page, or if you're watching from the Facebook page, just look up the Scholars of Wrestling and leave us a comment there. You can also like this video and subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, you can also follow us on our Twitter pages. Handles should be either in the description or annotations right on your screen right now. Follow us. Enjoy and join in the con. You got that? Yes. It is a mouthful. It is a mouthful. Yeah, I've been talking too much. Follow us on Twitter, damn it. I'm Vince McMahon. I just have one thing to say before we go. What do you have to say? At first, it didn't bother me so much last week, but someone actually really, like a friend of mine, actually pointed it out. And I'm just like, you know what? I really, I, I agree. And it kind of ruins it for me. What when up? it took four guys to take down Brock Lesnar, right? Yeah. It took him like 10, 15 minutes to tr- really take him down. Yet, in the past, you have seen these same four guys get taken out by people like John Cena, Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, with great ease. He, they, they faced all four of them at once, and they get taken out. And now look at Brock Lesnar. And the year he's had, and he's able to be taken out by the same four guys who were just basically jobbers for Seth Rollins. Hmm. And I really hate to say that with Kane, but he really is now a member of J and J Security, and that kind of makes me sad. Actually, you know what? It really makes me sad. I hate, like, I liked when Kane was like the director of operations, the author when Triple H and Stephanie were gone. Mm-hmm. And he was the authority figure, and he was actually working as the authority figure. Kind of like the, sometimes a face, sometimes a heel, but really is more heel than face. Right. Because he was really, he was starting the, he was having the feud, quote, quote, feud with Seth Rollins, and now that's completely out the window by a simple, sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. And now it's bribery with Apple watches and a, and a brand new car. Yeah, that was weird. Again, as soon as I saw that segment, I'm like, oh, guys, it's going to be this type of yeah, show. Most of it I can just chalk up to bad booking. As far as, you know, Brock Lesnar being beaten by a certain people at a certain time, sure. It, it's it it's by people weird. who have been who have been known to be beaten up by one person in the past. Right. Again, you can either look at this one or two ways, in my opinion. You can look at it as poor booking, or the way I prefer to look at it, uh, again, this is probably me being optimistic again but you could also look at it like this is one of those instances where it's almost like people have like regular athletes have like an ebb and flow like some people have a really off period where they just can't get anything done some people have a really good hot streak where they're just on fire and they're doing really well that is I guess what they're trying to go for and honestly if I think of it that way it makes me feel a hell of a lot better about it I guess. I guess it's just apparently now since the ratings of this past Raw were were one of the worst ever. Not a surprise, even though they had Cesaro and Cena. It's the rest of the show sucked. Triple H and Stephanie are making their return to WWE TV to help raise the ratings, and I'm not really thrilled. Hey, then again, we're at a point where the only thing we can do is just sit back, watch, and see how it all unfolds. In the meantime, you know who we are. We are the Scholars of Wrestling, and you have just been schooled. You're You're welcome. welcome. See you all in Japan. 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 Japan.